cut on that. Why? Yes. If you're like me, then you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who isn't nowadays? Everyone's talking about it. It's the talk of the town. But only real fans, true hardcore fans that have been with us since the beginning, only they would know uh, two facts about us. Two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us. America's hottest will they or won't they couple. Yes. The new yes. Sam and Diane. <coughs> it's Bunny and Steve. First and foremost, the first fact, Bunny, is that you design lingerie for plus-sized women. What drew you to this profession? Uh, a deep love for Cass Elliot to begin with. Nice. You know, nice. Uh, it is a shame that her her life was cut short. Uh, and then people have to make <coughs> a lot of fat jokes over it. So, yes. that was an inspiration for me. Um, and one of the big ones. Uh, That's a powerful uh, one. No pun intended. Yes. Yes, of course. And, and the I, second thing... Yes, go ahead. <laughs> okay. And the second thing that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So what I like to do here is I like to take a story from the history books and reword it via my own unique panache. So that's what this is, another <coughs> educationally uneducational installment of Stage <coughs> Historic Approximation! <coughs> dun, 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 dun. Good job, Bunny. Good job. Thank you. you. You powered through, and I'm proud of you. Or SHAP, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not, Personally, I like the name Shap, and I really like the segment. I like it so much that I think Shap should be an adjective. Yeah. Like a teacher, a history teacher is in the zone, dropping some mad knowledge, and the students, they go, oh, Shap. There you go. Boom. Coined and minted. Soon Shap will be sweet. Keeping the nation. Anywho, this week on the old Shappity Shap Shap, we will be talking about two things. The musical Hamilton and its most vocal critic. And to do that, we need to talk about two important individuals. Two very important individuals. So first off, let's start with the first Shap subject. Lin-Manuel Miranda. What an amazing story he has. What an incredible life. Born in 1492, freer of the slaves, and the first president of this country, though sadly impeached for the shooting of Abe Lincoln. Oh, wait. Hold on. I fucked that up. Okay. Lin-Manuel Miranda, the founder of Jeet Kune Do, who fled to this country from Hong Kong after killing a man. Yes. Oh, wait. That's Bruce Lee. Okay, <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda, playwright, musician, a man who wrote two successful Broadway plays all by himself, so take that, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and won a Pulitzer Prize for one of them. He was born in New York City in 1980 to a fairly well-off family. His mom was a consultant for the Democratic Party, and his dad was a successful psychologist. And then Lin-Manuel Miranda apparently has an older sister who is the CFO of a massive consulting firm. So I'm a fan of Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yeah. But I am also radicalized enough. I'm enough of a leftist trash to see that Lin-Manuel Miranda was born into a life of privilege. And as a result of that, Lin-Manuel Miranda was, giving up, was given opportunities that us normies could never get. Yes. But that's beside the point. Anywho, nowadays, I don't know if you know this, Bunny, but nowadays Lin-Manuel Miranda is basically owned by the Disney Corporation. Yeah. 
Uh, he wrote. Is he uh, animatronic? I he might be. He might be. I've always kind of had a had a sneaking suspicion. Yeah, yeah. Well, he he wrote a bunch of the songs for Moana, and he wrote a song for a Star War, and he wrote all of the music for Disney's upcoming animated film Encanto, which is coming out around Thanksgiving. He starred in the sacrilegious Mary Poppins sequel. And Disney Plus paid him handsomely for the rights to the filmed uh, version of the stage production of his musical Hamilton. And speaking of Hamilton, let's talk about this for a moment, shall we? Okay. I, um, I was a fan of Hamilton, and I still am a fan of Hamilton. There are some songs on there that are oh, real you, bangers. You, you went for the big dive, yeah. You were into yeah, Hamilton I was really, a lot. I was into Hamilton before before everybody else was. I hate to be that guy, but I was into Hamilton before Ham everyone was before Hamilton swept the nation. Yes. But so much time has passed since Hamilton first came out that it's a really good time to take a good deep subjective look at this musical and what it means. And I firmly believe that no musical, or I dare say no, sing no one single work of art, truly personifies the Obama administration better than the musical Hamilton, which was released during the uh, Obama administration. I feel that the Obama administration and Hamilton are tied together. Okay. Because uh, when you look at the musical Hamilton, there's unity and there's hope and there's inclusion and there's a cast of minorities that are acting out the founding of America in the hopes of uh, reinventing the founding of America in the eyes of a new generation, making American history, which is oftentimes racist, making that history inclusive to all people. Plus, there's some really banger songs in it, so there you go. Hamilton, the blockbuster musical. And the reason why I feel that it represents the Obama administration is that the Obama was president, and the Democrats sold America on unity. Yes. We finally have a black president, so everyone is equal now. And the news in the media were like, racism isn't a thing anymore. And, and they, everyone kept writing bits about post-racial America. Yeah. <clears throat> now that we have a black president, whoo! Racism has just fucking disappeared. Ooh, no one is fucking racist anymore. We live in a post-racial fucking America. Oh, everyone is united. But while the Democrats are selling the entire nation on unity, these shitty fucking Republicans block all meaningful change the White House is, is starting intense drone strikes that are killing innocent people. The war on drugs continues. If anything, it's cranked up to 11. Yeah. And the current rise of violent far-right groups and the neo-Nazis that are marching on America's streets can all be traced back to white animosity over our country's first black president and all of these white power groups are forming while the media and the Democrats are going, oh, we have a black president. Fucking racism isn't a thing anymore. And, and like, I'm left-leaning liberal trash, as the review of our podcast says on Apple Podcasts. Yes. So, so uh, 
I'm left leaning liberal trash and I'm a big time Obama supporter. And yet in all reality, Obama sold us on hope and change, but managed to deliver very little. And like the Obama administration, the play Hamilton is pretty on the outside. But in reality, all of most of our nations, almost all of our nation's founding fathers were racist asshole pieces of trash. And maybe they don't deserve to be rehabilitated. Yeah. You know, maybe we shouldn't be spending time to rehabilitate these people. And maybe we should show some of these founding fathers for the assholes that they really are, you know? Yeah. So, and, and frankly, for me, Jefferson is my biggest heartbreak. Because it's like, like, and because it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, how yeah. can you write such beautiful, intricate, and important documents concerning freedom and liberty? And have slaves. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, like, all... what yeah. the fuck? Like, okay, like, I can kind of accept the other founding fathers as kind of ignorant peasants. Yeah. You know? I mean, George yeah. Washington was a military guy. I mean, there's not a lot of him in the crafting of the country. You know yes. what I mean? So yeah. him having slaves is like, well, you're just still ignorant, you know. You, but Thomas Jefferson is anachronistic, where like your and behavior does not align with your beliefs at all. Yeah, and and like when I was in college and like in my twenties and thirties, I'm like, oh man. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was a real fucking asshole. But now, all I can think about is the opening to Act Two of Hamilton, because that song is fucking wonderful. Yeah. And I hate that. I hate that the uh, racism and crimes of Benjamin Franklin are being uh, uh, pushed down in favor of a great fucking song. And now that's what I think of when I think of Benjamin Franklin. This is the problem with the musical Hamilton. Okay. So that brings us to our second Shap subject and a surprising one, author Toni Morrison. All right. Toni Morrison was a, uh, a black female author essayist, decorated college professor. She won the Pulitzer Prize in 1987 for her now legendary book, Beloved. And then in 1993, she won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Her writings were a powerful look, not just at the black experience, but at the human experience in general. And Toni Morrison, she was one of, she is still to this day, one of the prominent black authors of all time, period. She was a legend. She is right up there with some of the big names in all of American literature. And while she was alive, she fucking hated the musical Hamilton. Okay. She hated it. Absolutely hated it. Uh, and for all of the reasons that we just said. So when Toni Morrison heard that legendary poet and playwright Ishmael Reed was, go was considering writing a play attacking the musical Hamilton, Toni Morrison basically became fry in Futurama and said, shut up and take my money. Yeah. Uh, Toni Morrison became the second largest financial backer of the anti-Hamilton play. Okay. Oh, shit, how much do you want? Let me get my checkbook. You're writing a play 
about Lin Manuel Miranda attacking Hamilton. Shit. Just <laughs> let me make it rain because I fucking hate that. The play was a Lin Manuel Miranda take on a Christmas carol called The Haunting of Lin Manuel Miranda. I'm sorry, but um, I can't just call him Lin. And I can't just call him Lin Manuel, and yeah. I can't call him Mr. Miranda. I have to do the full thing. You have to. Yes. So I feel that I've said the name Lin Manuel Miranda. Very much in the same like, way is that you just have to say Taika Watiti. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You can't just say Taika. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. The only person that can just call him Taika is Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. No one else can. Even like, even like Flight of the Concords still have to use the full name. Yeah. And they're also Kiwis. So I feel, so anyway, I feel like I've said the name Lynn manuel Miranda like 30 times in this one segment alone, and it's uh, driving me insane. But uh, the play was called The Haunting of Lin-Manuel Miranda. It got performed in 2019. And in the play, Lin-Manuel Miranda is visited by the ghosts of the founding fathers, the real asshole, racist piece of shit founding fathers, and not the entertaining, rapping, musical founding fathers from his musical. And by the end of the play, Lin-Manuel Miranda has learned the error of his ways. Playwright Ishmael Reed told CurrentAffairs.org this about his play. Quote, They cast black people in order to defend projects that black people might find objectionable. It distracts from the racism of the white historical characters. And I love that. I love that so much, and I find it fascinating because I I did have a big Hamilton phase where I was obsessed with it, and I do still like it, and I I am not throwing away my shot. I fucking love that song, and it's a fucking banger, but uh, the Founding Fathers were all trash, and a lot of them should not be made into canonized saints for a younger generation. And yes. I'm really excited about the fact that slowly but surely, American society is finally waking up from Hamilton. You know? Yeah. Like, I remember when I was a younger lad, and everyone's like, oh, man. Have you seen this exciting new musical called Rent? Yeah. And it, that was the cool musical for the young kids. And then we as a society grew past that. Yeah. And so I'm thinking that it might be one of those things where America is slowly but surely moving past Hamilton. And I wonder if eventually they do make a live action musical version of Hamilton. And by that time, people are treating it the same way that they're currently treating Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. Like, oh, how old is Lin Manuel Miranda now? Maybe he shouldn't be in Hamilton anymore. <laughs> Ugh, Hamilton, <coughs> it's kind of like cats again. Are they gonna de-age him in the in the first act? So hey, yeah. So See, anywho, Hamilton was was not one of my favorite founding fathers. You know, yeah. he was pushing for an America that was more shaped like a monarchy and set up the banking system pretty much. So you know, not a huge fan of. Hamilton, and I remember even at the time when we were talking about putting Harriet Tubman on the money, I don't know what the fuck happened to that. Briefly, there was talk about putting it on the 10. Because the play Hamilton wasn't a thing yet. And everyone's like, what? Yeah. Uh, Hamilton was on the 10, and it was pre the musical Hamilton. 
And so everyone's like, if we're going to put Harriet Tubman on a bill, put it on Alexander Hamilton. Who the fuck is that? All we know is that he was killed by Aaron Burr in a duel because of the first ever got milk ad. Yeah, and it's kind of like it's kind of like when a celebrity gets cut down in their prime, you know, like Farrah Fawcett became one of the greatest actresses ever after she died. Yeah. More so than any of her acting performances can justify. You know? Yeah. We have been willing to turn in the other direction when it comes to Michael Jackson now that he's dead. Yeah, it, it, that motherfucker got canonized. That motherfucker. He was alive and he's like... It, Michael Jackson is living in Saudi Arabia in the castle of a prince and he named his kid Blanket and he's holding him off of a balcony and like, oh my god, Michael Jackson is a weirdo. He is an absolute weirdo. Oh wait, he's dead? Don't you dare make fun of Michael Jackson! Yeah. I loved him for his entire life and he was a genius! It, it, it upsets me. It upsets me. So I think we remember Al we remember Alexander Hamilton more favorably than is due him because yeah. he was shot and he gets that like kind of celebrity benefit like oh, don't say anything about Alexander Hamilton he was shot yeah <laughs> you know and I remember when they were talking about put him on the money and yeah, like I was like. Yeah, okay, put it, you could you could put him on the ten put Harriet Tubman on the ten. And I was like Andrew Jackson as far as I was aware of at that point in my life was pretty much he was like one of the more fun presidents. He was he was more akin to Teddy Roosevelt than any of the founding fathers, so I was like, Oh don't put her on the twenty, put her on the ten. Hamilton was a waste. And then I was like then I found out a whole lot of shit about Thomas Jefferson uh, not Thomas Jefferson. Andrew Jackson and I was like Yeah, let's put let's let's put Harry Tubman on the twenty. <laughs> you know? In twenty twelve we choose between the two. <laughs> yeah. In and twenty Andrew Jackson Way fucking worse. Yeah. Seventh president, Andrew Jackson. Fun fact, pre-Hamilton, someone made a rock opera called Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Like, yeah, like imagine Tommy, except Tommy is <laughs> a crazy-ass, batshit insane, vaguely racist president. Yeah. I saw a documentary about the making of it, like, sometime last year, and I find it fascinating that before Hamilton became a massive hit, someone wrote an Andrew Jackson rock opera, and it failed and burned. It, it, it crashed and burned. And yeah. it's like, oh, man, that's weird. No one should ever make a rock opera about, oh, my God, Hamilton, this is brilliant. No one's ever done anything like this before. So... Yeah. yeah, it's interesting that you should mention that. Bloody bloody Andrew Jackson is the name of the fucking musical. I mean, do, yeah. the, do like the British do this? I mean, do they have like, do they have like these epic historic plays about their previous kings, you know, and things like I don't that? Know. I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean. They certainly pay them respect. Yeah. But, like, I don't think it's in this extreme, man. I mean, like... Like, you can watch 1776 and be like, yeah, this isn't real. Yeah. You know, these are highly polished... one-dimensional characters. Yeah. Yeah. Who sing catchy tunes. God, I remember that musical. That was a weird-ass musical. 1776. 
Yeah. It was yeah. always on TV on a Sunday. It was a Sunday movie. Yeah. And it was yeah. starring the voice of Kit from Knight Rider. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> I totally forgot. I thought we were still doing Bunny Versus for a second. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for... That's it for uh, Steve's Historic Approximations this week. Join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximations! And cut on that. I've got... I've got